Good morning. Our gathering hymn this morning can be found on page 657 in the blue hymnal, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Good morning, my name is Andrew Terry. I am the area missioner for the Central Convocation of which St. Francis here in College Station is a part. And we will begin with our identity statement. Our arms and hearts are open unconditionally to everyone who is in search of a deepening relationship with God and others in a safe and healing environment. We embrace, encourage, and empower all to love, serve, and worship for the glory of God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear and respond to God's word. Our first reading is a reading from Ezekiel. The Lord said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read the psalm responsively by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. You enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, to the eyes of the maid, to the hand of the mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, and he shows his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud. Our second reading today is a reading from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who, 14 years ago, was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast. But on on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast... I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, 
then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that's been given to him? What deeds of power? are being done by his hands. Isn't this the carpenter, 
the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not these his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Holy and gracious God, send your word among us. Breathe your spirit upon us. Restore us, revive us, and make us whole. Amen. Please be seated. It's good to be with y'all. I have gotten to know some of you through the conversations group. It's one of the best things going in the convocation. And I'm proud to be here and grateful for the opportunity to share this time with you. Jesus goes home today, and the folks in his hometown are scandalized by him. But I'll say this for them, at least they're scandalized for the right reason. They know Jesus as a carpenter. Those hands are meant for woodwork, not deeds of power. They know his family. They live down the street. How could he now speak this kind of wisdom that transcends the day-to-day -day reality that they've gotten used to? It's the scandal of the gospel. They are tripping over the right issue. How could God be one of us? It has implications for you and me, for our life. Having faith that God is a human being who has been crucified. It has implications for how we treat one another in this nation. How we love those who Jesus calls our neighbors. Those